Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Becky and I like to read. <laughs> Today's video is going to be a themed reading vlog. I have a lot of witchy books on my shelf that I want to get read. And I mentioned this in my witchy book recommendations video, which I will have linked down below if you want to check out that. If you haven't watched it yet, be sure to check that out if you're looking for some witchy recommendations. And then check the description for links to the collaborators of that video for other witchy book recommendations as well. But in that video, I said that even though I love reading about witches, I'm fascinated with witch history. I pretty much have been for the majority of my life. Most of the books that I read about witches just do not hit for me. They are either pretty average books or they are just straight up misses. So my goal for this reading vlog is to hopefully find a new favorite witchy read that will put me under its spell. No? Okay. Good afternoon. I am going to make me some fudgy brownies because I'm craving chocolate and... When I'm craving chocolate, I make brownies so I can eat the dough. My first witchy book is going to be Cackle by Rachel Harrison. This is not one that I had planned to read this month, but I just bought it at Barnes & Noble the other day. And I saw Michelle over at Michelle's Library. She said she was going to read it, so I asked her if she wanted to buddy read it. And she said, sure, so I am going to start this one. I've already started it. I'm only on chapter two right now. I can't really tell you much about it. I will tell you that I, I'm feeling this girl. She, she's right up my alley. She's out with her friend celebrating her 30th birthday party and she's like, all right, let's call it a night. And her other friend is like, it's only 10. <laughs> I feel you, I feel you, honey. 10 o'clock is my bedtime too. Um, but so far, nothing much has happened. They went to a palm reader and the palm reader told her that her future is cloaked in darkness. Don't know what that means. Um, I don't really know much about this book in general to tell you. I know it has witchy vibes and I think there's like a spider familiar maybe? Tell me mixing ingredients together to get something delicious isn't magical. So I have 64 pages in the cackle so far. I, nothing really has happened. Um, this girl moves into this new small town. It's very autumnal, this town. Um, seems like it would be a great place to visit. Um, she's a teacher. It doesn't really seem like she enjoys teaching or even likes kids all that much. So I don't know why she's a teacher. Um, but she's a teacher in a different town, and she commutes back and forth, and she's met this mysterious woman named Sophie, who everybody in the town is, like, super interested in and super friendly towards, and she seems like she may be a witch. Um, she seems older than what her looks present or whatnot, and she has just taken, or she's just invited this woman. I don't even know this girl's name. What is her name? Annie. She's just invited Annie to her house to bake pies, and it seems like she just wants a friend or whatnot. And I stopped because it, it came to this point where Annie asked her if she ever had kids, and she says, no, I've never had the desire for kids. And I'm like, sweet, me neither. I must be a witch. <laughs> so I found that really relatable. Um, so... I'm finding the characters relatable. I just need something exciting to happen. Good morning, everybody. So, last night I made it 100 pages in to Cackle. I like it so far. Um, it's very, very autumnal, which I love. I love this um, just cozy, fallish small town. And that's weird because I'm not a small town person. I don't like small towns. I grew up in way too many small towns. I don't like small towns. But this small town... I'm not minding. Um, I'm also really liking Sophie. She's got me confused though. I don't know if she's like a good person or if she's a bad person. She definitely giving me witchy vibes. Whether or not she's an actual witch, I don't know. But she definitely giving me the witchy vibes. And I just, I don't know how to feel about her. I like her a lot more than the main character, Annie though. So... I'll definitely get it finished today. So the first book that I read was Cackle by Rachel Harrison. As I mentioned, this was a buddy read with Michelle over at Michelle's Library. 
I ended up giving this a very low three star and I may end up ranting about this book. So in the beginning, I thought Anne's character was very relatable, you know? She's this mid 30 year old who just got out of a relationship that she had been in for 10 years. She's moving to this town where she has no idea who anybody is. She doesn't have any family around her or anything like that. I've been there, I've done that. <laughs> You know, she's very much like, you know, I'm in bed by 10 p.m. and all that jazz. Relatable. Relatable as hell. I thought that the atmosphere in here and the vibes in here were spot on. It was very autumnal, very fall. This is like a quaint, cute little fall town in upper New York. I could just imagine the leaves changing and the small town vibes. And usually I am not one for small towns. Those aren't usually the things I enjoy in books. In fact, I usually hate them in books. But for some reason, I think it was because the characters within the small town were so nice and so, like, accommodating and friendly that I didn't so much mind it. Also, there wasn't a whole lot of digging into the other people within this town. This is a very insular story, I feel like. You don't get really any information on any of the characters. You don't get to connect with any of the characters. Even our main characters, Anne and Sophie, I never felt like I really got to know them as characters. I got to know Sophie a little bit more with her backstory, but I was still left with so many questions about her past that I just felt like this was a very surface level story. I also felt like Anne's character, she was just very annoying for me to read about the longer I was with her. She is a teacher and she moves to this town, but I didn't really feel like she even liked being a teacher. And I think this was hinted at by Sophie in the story that her mother was a teacher and Sophie even asked her, are you a teacher because you really wanted to be a teacher or are you a teacher because that is what your mother was and you wanted to follow in her footsteps? And I feel like that was pretty much what Anne did because when she moves to this new school, she doesn't really take any time to like try and get to know her co-workers. In fact, she's very standoffish from them. And she was just so annoying to the point where she got annoyed when her co-workers would ask her like personal questions like, are you in a relationship? And I'm thinking, honey, have you never interacted with people? This is how people get to know you. They ask you these personal questions to see if you have anything in common with them. You know, they're trying to get to know you and you're just brushing them off and yet you see them as the problem. No, you're the problem. You're a bitch, Anne. You're a bitch. I couldn't stand her. On top of that, it didn't really seem like she liked the kids that she was teaching either. She referred to them, I can't remember the exact phrase, but I'm pretty sure it was bag of meats or meat sacks or something like that. First day of school. Like, that does not come across as a woman who wants to be a teacher and loves to teach. But then at the end of the book, she gets reacquainted with one of her former students and she's like, I was the best teacher in that place. Really? Really, Anne? You were the best teacher? I don't think so. I'm sorry, but I highly doubt that. <laughs> the other thing that I didn't love about this book that I took away from it personally is that all men suck. Men are the cause of all our problems. Men suck. Men are crap. You don't need men in this world. And I am just not somebody who vibes with that message. So anytime any sort of media tries to push that message toward me, I automatically don't like it. Every single male character in this book, and there aren't a lot of them, there are only about five male characters who we are introduced in this book. I mean, we're not really introduced to a lot of characters in this book, but the five male characters that I could remember meeting in this book, all of them portrayed horribly. Not a single one of them was portrayed with a redeeming quality. A couple of them I could totally understand. Total douches. But there was one guy in particular who I just didn't think deserved the way that Anne viewed him. He was a guy that she went on a blind date with and when she gets there, he's very shy. He doesn't really engage in conversation with her. And she has this attitude of like, oh my God, could you not even attempt conversation? Or, oh, I saw him cringe, so he must not like the way I look or something like that. And I'm thinking, bitch, he's probably got social anxiety because he's going out on this blind date with a woman he's never met. Maybe he's just awkward. She was putting her insecurities and her problems onto this poor man who did not deserve the viewpoint that she gave because it was just total BS. Also, her ex-boyfriend 
who she's still so caught up with in this story throughout this book he calls her he talks to her he ends up dating this other girl and he calls her and he tells her you know she posted a picture of us online and i didn't want you to like see it and be hurt by it so i'm telling you and blah 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 and i thought that was a very mature thing but then at the end he turns around to be like a total douche who wants to like use her and i'm just like where the fuck did that come from that was totally not his character the only other thing I liked about this book was the little spider almost familiar that she's constantly seeing spiders and this is another thing that I had about this book is I was left with questions as I was like so are all the people that done Sophie wrong are they the spiders did she curse them as spiders I don't know never answered or my other question was like or are they the people the ghosts that are haunting her house I don't know book never tells me did she kill them and bury them in the graveyard by her house? I don't know. Book never told me. I liked very few things about this book, but overall, as you can tell, I had issues with it. But if you want to go and see somebody's point of view who really loved this book, definitely check out Michelle's video where she talked about it. I will have it linked down below so you can check it out and get like a different perspective to see if this would be a book that you would be interested in. second witchy book of this vlog. I am reading Mayday by R.R. Bourne. This is a self-pub witchy book. I don't know when it was published, but I am reading it for the Hocus Pocus readathon prompt of a black or orange cover. It's kind of got orange on it too with the fire, but yeah. So I'm about 50 pages into this and so far it is about a girl who she left her coven because they were using black magic and she didn't want to do black magic she just wanted to help people and so she's just been doing like tarot card readings and like putting potions together to help the people in her community and one day her cousin comes and finds her and he tells her that she should go back to her coven because somebody is killing witches and he's afraid that she might be a victim so that is all I've read so far of it. It's a really short book. It's only 285 pages. So far, like, I'm, I'm neither here nor there about it. It just depends on how the story progresses. It seems like it's more of a, like, mystery type witchy story. I do think there's going to be some romantic element. I just don't know who with. <laughs> um, it's too soon to tell, but... I will keep you updated. The next book I read was Mayday by R.R. Bourne. This is an indie self-pub witchy almost mystery story. I had never heard of this book and I forgot even why I wanted this book because I think my sister gave this to me but I got to thinking about it and it was because the second book had this cover and when I saw this cover scrolling through I don't know Amazon or something this cover stood out to me and I was like, oh, I want to read that. That looks like an awesome story. But then I found out that it was book two and I needed to read book one. So I figured that out. <laughs> it is very much a witchy mystery story, which isn't what I was expecting, quite honestly. I ended up giving this one a, about an average three star. I liked it much more than Cackle, but still just a three star. So I liked the originality of it. I liked the very diverse cast of characters we have in here. I believe Ari is, she's Native American and she's also Black. A lot of the other characters come from different ethnicities and backgrounds as well. So I really liked that about it. I liked the Texas setting. This had a pretty good plot to it where it didn't veer off course or anything like that. However, I didn't really connect to any of the characters. I didn't care about their lives or their struggles. I thought that the end of the climax, the defeating the bad guy was just way too easy and didn't really have a lot of consequences with it. And for that, I don't think I will end up moving on to this book. I think I'm good with finishing this. It was a quick read, but I have no desire to move on with this series now, unfortunately, because this cover is so freaking cool. But yeah.
Before I move on to the final book in this blog, I wanted to insert some footage from when we went to the cauldron in Philadelphia for my sister's birthday. It was a really cool thing to do. It is this bar where you walk in and they give you a wand and they give you robes, kind of like Harry Potter, and you sit down and you pick out drinks and you can make drinks magically. They give you all the ingredients to make it and they're all named fun little things like dragon's tears and all that jazz and you whip up your own magical drinks. They do have alcoholic and non-alcoholic options. They have like pretty much like bar food as snacks. So if you ever are in Philly or one of their other locations, I think they said they had one in New York, Paris, and Edinburgh. If you're somebody who likes witchy stuff, witchy vibes, and you want like a fun evening activity to do with like your significant other or your friends or something, definitely give the cauldron a try because it was really fun. Stir six times clockwise. Go ahead, Centella. Six times clockwise. This way. Yep, towards, towards me and your mother. And one time counterclockwise. And one more. And one more. Perfect. And proceed to strain the potion evenly to the serving glass is provided. Place your wand in the air and request manticore venom. Manticore venom. Manticore venom, please. Right. Place your glass on top of the box. You'll place it on the illumination. Yes, yes. And with your wand, cast the spell Lux. Pour the entirety of the manticore venom into the tonic and observe the Again, I thought I should do like an update on the book that I am currently reading. I probably showed you some b-roll of me flipping through it, but let me go get the book real quick so I can show you. <laughs> the last book that I am reading for this witchy vlog is actually the Hocus Pocus Illustrated Edition. I am also reading this for the Hocus Pocus Readathon of the prompt of a 
spooky book that's been turned into a movie. And y'all, this, this isn't spooky, but this is as spooky as I get, okay? I don't watch scary movies because I am a chicken. I have a very vivid, active imagination, and scary movies give me nightmares. So, Hocus Pocus is as scary as I get. Um, and I know that this book came out after the movie, so it's kind of cheating, but it's the best I could do, okay? It's the best I can do. So, yeah, I am 50 pages into this right now, and it's doing a really good job of following the movie. There are some slight changes in here. There's even a little bit more detail than what you get in the movie, which I'm really enjoying. But so far, we are at the point where Danny and Max are out trick-or-treating, and, you know, she gets mad at him for giving away her candy, and they end up finding Allison's house. So that is where I am at currently. This book isn't too long. It's only 240 something pages. And I do plan on doing a, some reading spreads tonight with my friend Yami. So I think I should get this done tonight. Uh, but this is what the book looks like. I did share some images of it earlier. There is the naked hardcover on the back. It has the Sanderson sisters. I also like how it's printed on like this not quite white paper. It's almost like this grayish looking old paper. And then all of the chapters start with these cute like old fashioned letters. So I think it's just cute little details like that. There's another illustration. But yeah, so far I think it's matching the movie really well. The last yeah. book I read for this witchy vlog was the Hocus Pocus illustrated novelization. I did take off the dust jacket because I just think it is a much prettier book naked. But this is pretty much exactly that. It is the novelization of the Hocus Pocus movie. It does a very excellent job of following pretty much the movie. There are some little details that the movie didn't include and there are also some details in the movie that were not in this. I feel like if you watch the movie and then you read the book you will get a very well-rounded story. I did end up only giving it four stars but it was my favorite of this reading vlog. It's not an all-time favorite book just like Hocus Pocus is not my all-time favorite movie but I feel like it was a great story for fall. It's a great story if you're somebody who loves the Hocus Pocus movie. If you're looking for a little nostalgia this will definitely hit the spot. It was a really quick read. It was really easy to read. The font was really big, which I really appreciated because I don't see well. I think it would be a really cute tradition if you sort of like take the tradition of reading like a Christmas story to your children at Christmas time. Read this to your kids at Halloween, you know? I think it would be a really cute tradition to start. So, favorite one of the bunch and I definitely would recommend checking this one out. Much to my dismay, I did not end up finding like an all-time favorite new witchy read. But that is okay. I'm not going to give up on witchy reads. There are several that I have enjoyed. See my witchy book recommendation video down below for some that I did enjoy. And I will continue to be on the hunt for some great witchy reads. So talk to me down in the comments. Let me know if you've read any of these books, what your thoughts were about them, or let me know what witchy book you think I should read. So thank you guys so much for watching and until my next video, Read something witchy for me.